Hello. Um, on the way to the airport. Look, ain't been very good in it with this weather. Our council have um, only sorted the main roads. All the on the estates, all the roads there, they've just sheet ice. The salt bins are all empty from last year. It's a fucking joke, isn't it? Country comes to standstill. Anyway, me and old misery bollocks here, Mick. It's Mick's 70th birthday. Um, and we're going abroad. Right, they're way to standstill now. Um, it's going to be warmer where we're going. <laughs> about, one, about one degree. <laughs> um, we won't be getting there till late. So, um, we'll do a bit of fishing when we get there and we're going to investigate the fine art of brickwork uh, and the history of it. It won't be boring. I'll cut all the boring bits out. Um, so, yeah. Um, I'll see you all in the morning when we get up at, um, at the hotel. See you later. Just waiting for Mick. Um, we've, uh, we've landed. But, um, I've got an EU passport, so I've just sailed straight through. But I've got the baggage, and <laughs> Mick's in his great big queue because he's got a British passport. Hey, the joys of Brexit. So, uh, oh, fun and games coming through Stansted. Um, Mick's got like two coats on, three jumpers, and oh, God knows what else on. <laughs> oh, you know, he's got a pair of braces on. They made him take them off. He had to strip off, take the braces off. Oh dear, then, he, then they made him take his shoes off. They're asking what's in his wallet, isn't it? It's obvious, isn't it? Euros. But uh, yeah, he'll be here in a minute anyway. I'm going to head off to the hotel. Good morning. <laughs> Where are we? Well, we're in another cold morning. It's minus one. And it's going out to one degrees. That's my hotel. There. Yeah. A bit unconventional. I'll tell you why in a minute. And if we look over here. Might give you a clue where we are. Yep, we're in Amsterdam. There's the red light district over there, about a 10 minute walk. Right, why are we here? Mixed birthday, fishing obviously, we're right on top of it. Um, Hotel Schwann, there's a few here as you can see, uh, these are all hotel boats, most of them. Uh, hotels in Amsterdam are just too bloody expensive. I don't know exactly how much this is because Mick um, paid for the whole lot of flights and everything. I just give him half the money. But he said it was like half the price of uh, normal hotels. It's fine, it's warm. Um, I must admit the rooms are very small. But it's a boat, isn't it? You know, but it's good enough for us what we want. Uh, what happened last night? Oh, trying to get here. Here he shuts about 11 o'clock because he wants to go to bed. And obviously if you're staying here you've got a key. And we was at the airport at like 10 to 11. We ain't going to make it, are we? We spoke to him on the phone, it's not a problem. He said he'd wait up and uh, normally get a train from the Skipo Airport straight into um, Amsterdam Central, uh, which is over there. Um, we'd have had to jump in the cab there, that's about 3k to here. And... Uh, so we had to get a cab from the airport. Um, so we jumped in the cab, the driver was Turkish, uh, didn't speak any English, I don't speak any Turkish, my Dutch is just, you know, really rusty, I haven't spoken it probably for 40 years. Uh, and I did dress, give him the address and everything, and he, he just couldn't fathom it out. He said, I need a street name, I need a street name. Well, there ain't no street name here, is there? You know. Uh, and while all this is going on, Dricky rings me. Uh, so I'm trying to talk to him. Uh, oh, bless him, he's a nutcase, isn't he? I love him to bits. And uh, trying to talk to Trump. I think I was live on his show, I think. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, so, yeah, anyway, we got here in the end. We made it. So uh, what we're going to do now, we've had a bit of breakfast. We are then going to have a little bit of fishing. And I'm then going to take you into town uh, and show something related to Brickland. So I'll see you there later. Well, don't hold too much hope with the fishing, to be quite honest. <laughs> oh, the rods fell over. Um, yeah, the water temperature's freezing. It's cooler than up there, though, look. He must know what he's doing. I um, don't know if you can see that, but that's ice on there. But look at all these boats. Beautiful, aren't they? 
a lot of these are hotels. Um, the hotel we're on, um, Hotel Boot de uh, they're actually a working boat as well. It's for a few months of the year, um, he works it. I don't know what he carts about. <coughs> it was built in 1928 and uh, used to cart cement about up to two, 2000, I think, then it was revamped. It was a hotel in 2000. Uh, you can see them all there. Uh, see all the ice? Don't look good, does it? Anyway, we'll give it another half hour, see what happens. Just walked over the other side here. And there's all these wonderful old um, Dutch sailing barges here. It's like a museum, really. Uh, unbelievable what people will spend money on to restore, isn't it? Um, each one has got the history to them. We bought them. Uh, yeah, beautiful. All right, there's no ice here. And there's plenty of places to fish in between the boats, so we're going to give that a go. Oh, it's cold though, it's definitely cold. That's the science museum there. Why are we going in there? There's Mick up there. Right. Let me just show you this um, some fine brickwork here, typically Dutch. Beautiful arches there, all this carved brickwork. It's the Grand Hotel, Amsterdam. Yeah, it's called the Grand Hotel for a reason, I suppose. Uh, yeah. This is what you get. This is what Dutch boys can do. Uh, it's not that old. Uh, it's done in English, kind actually. Or I do call that. It's not Dutch, but this is Dutch. Yeah. What do they call that? Oh, block bombs they call it. In English, but they call block bombs. We get this detail here. Tiny little bricks. Only about 25 mil. Thick. Yeah. We would have worked this whole building. Yeah. Amazing stuff, eh? Well, there we are, typical Amsterdam. One of the many canals. And ours is by the river. Um, we give up the fishing. Too cold. Just spoke to another couple of young Dutch lads who uh, were walking about the fishing rods. <laughs> they never had a clue either. So, um, yeah. Now, ours is how they lean over. Crazy, isn't it? And it's just all water here. Um, we found a bar. <coughs> People moan about the price of beer in England. Them two glasses of beer there. Well, they're a fiver each anyway, and that's how they come like that. <coughs> it is a bit of a stronger beer, but there you go, that's a fiver. Right, why are we here? Tell him I'm spending my pension money. You're spending your pension money on it, yeah. Right, while we're here, we are going to talk about Gage Brickwork. Where did it start? How did it start? And what do we know about it? Well, I don't know an awful lot. Um, it definitely matured itself in, in Northern Holland and uh, most definitely Amsterdam mixed on the gin. Uh, how did it get here? Well, Spain invaded the lowlands and that's uh, Southern Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg uh, in 1566. And it seems like skilled tradesmen, probably from Belgium, um, moved north uh, into in the Holland, Holland and Netherlands. Yeah, that's a quick one. Um, what is it, Netherlands or Holland? Well, what it is, Netherlands is the twelve provinces, and Holland is North and South Holland provinces. Um, call it what you like, Netherlands or Holland. Uh, everyone understands. Um, yeah. So these tradesmen, because they were Protestants and the Spanish were Catholics, uh, moved north um, because they escaped in religious persecution, really. Um, and they brought their skills with them, uh, which was namely Geslepen Metzelwerk, um, which is sharpened brickwork. 
Now what we're going to visit is a place called Divag uh, and I've contacted them and I've been given special permission to go in there and film in there um, which I'm really pleased about. Um, Divalg, it's the old gates of Amsterdam. Um, it was built in 1488. Uh, it was a white, well, the Divalg means way out, so cotton, tobacco, things like that were weighed before they could be sold. Um, I've had to write this down because I won't remember it all. It became the Guild House in 1617. Now, bear that in mind, the, uh, the date, 1617. There were bricklayers, masons, plumbers, roofers, surgeons, um, they all met there once a week. Uh, but also it was like that they trained people there. It's the oldest non-religious building in Amsterdam. <coughs> now to get in there to learn the fine art of gauge brickwork, or sharp brickwork as they call it, um, you had to do a four year apprenticeship and then do two years work with the same bloke you've done the apprenticeship with and only then could you get into the college, into the guild. Um, so that's where they learned to do this uh, type of work. Um, now, what happened is they had to do a test panel, we could call it. They actually, it's a masterpiece um, before they could pass out. And there's over 80 uh, in this building. Um, it is uh, a scalloped, um, what do they call it, niche in there, and that's got 1600 on it. So, what you've got to bear in mind is the great fire of London was 1666 and that happened because most of the houses were uh, made of timber there was very few stone and brick houses so they were they were years ahead of us um, the Dutch and Flemish bricklayers so um, that will be our next port of call anyway we're going to finish these beers uh, and then we're going to go up to the Divalg uh, and hopefully they'll let us in and uh, we'll see what's there and then I'll come back to you with some more information after that so here we are, is Divac, uh, the old gates of um, Amsterdam. Now I've got to find the entrance now. Oh, here we are. This is the bit I was uh, told about. There's the old gate Nick, to the guild hall. If you see there, there's the brick layer there of his trowel, uh, mason's tools, etc. Yeah, all the mason's tools. That is the entrance um, for the bricklayers. Guild. Um, I thought there was a date on it somewhere, I can't see it. But uh, yeah, let's try and find the entrance in. So I'm not sure where it is because part of it's a restaurant, we don't want to be going in there. Uh, well, I say 1488, this was built. 1488, look, it still stood there. Sweet corners. Can't go wrong, can you? <coughs> okay, well, we're here, we're in, and uh, I mean, look at this. That is fine art, gauge brickwork at its best. This was all done um, uh, at a set scale. Um, it was made from the the red rubbers were full size and everything was cut down to fit. Uh, these were all done by apprentices. They wouldn't have been that young. Apparently they started at about 14, 15 years of age. Um, at the time they'd done their six years and started here. They'd have been there in their early 20s. And these are, these are one millimetre joints. Obviously things have moved since the day they were done. <laughs> Bit of stone work there. Yeah, unbelievable, isn't it? 1600s. Just move along a bit. Okay. And I wonder what work they went on to do after this. I mean, the work was on their doorstep, wasn't it? Building Amsterdam. Now look at them joints, that's my finger there. Crazy. And this, in here, there's the one I spoke to you about. 
the uh, the bust niche little feature above it in the Solomon columns I mean come on Rob Songer give us a go at that one <laughs> there's a lot of work in there and the along here obviously using it as a bit of a store place now another little niche here don't know if you can just about see that crazy Oh, there's another stair up here. I don't know. Oh, oh blimey, there's more up there. Okay. And in here, more niches. This was all projects that had to be fulfilled by the apprentices. There's a little stairway up here. This window. Oh, there's loads. Oh. Bullseye. A little bullseye there. Another one here. I think they actually was only given permission to do this in the 1680s, but apparently they've been doing it for a long time before. Jack arches. That's like a 3D effect there, isn't it? Oh, there is more than eight in there. Oh, look at these. These windows. There's stuff carved into it, but yeah, look, someone was here in 1796. I don't think that it wasn't when it was done. Someone just carved that in there. And there's more by the looks of it. Hmm. No, that, I think that's it. I'll just get a quick look at the view though while we're here. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is the Surgeon's Auditorium. This is from the Surgeon's Guild, um, as you can see. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> what we got here? Oh, I feel really um, good about this. Yeah, out the window. Dutch gables, loads of them. <laughs> Quite have your beer, isn't you? Might it zero zero? <laughs> Every good Dutch company has beer. Yeah. Well, just we're here, I've shown you it, and um, we will speak about it a little bit later, a bit more. I just noticed this coming down. Now this is all on the angle, you can see this. To fit the radius, obviously, you know, this is a, a tower, a, a round tower. Um, I'd have to think about the maths on doing that. It's obviously possible because they've done it all them hundreds of years ago. Yeah, but that is something else. I'll just stand back, get the full thing of it, really. I don't think one apprentice done that, do you? Anyone up on my channel actually ever done a niche? I haven't. Um, I've looked at it. It don't look easy. Uh, right, well that's it folks, ghost of Michael English, <laughs> sitting on a radiator, <laughs> sitting on a radiator, uh, yeah right, um, where are we going now, 
we are going to go to a tool shop and see some tools, some Dutch tools and see what they cost and what goes on there. Um, and then that will be it from the bricklaying side of things. Well, there will probably be more because I'll spot something else tonight, but um, yeah. Yeah, I feel privileged to have come here, to be quite honest. I really do. Uh, right, I'll catch you in a while. Another canal, loads of them, loads of boats. A lot, a lot of people live on these boats, and they? they are big boats. Well, you know, quite luxurious inside. Um, right, we've walked up just to the edge of the sort of central Amsterdam. It's still quite busy here. To uh, Gunters and Musa. Um, great big shop in the distance here. Um, it's an hardware store and they sell tools and I've been in it a long time ago. So we're going to go in there and see what um, bricklaying tools they got and what kind of cost they're going to be. Here we are. Gunters and Musa. No tools here. How good this enter. It's shut for lunch. No. <laughs> yeah, well electric door, you just push it. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. Mm -hmm. Plenty of stuff in here. You have no key uh, in Metzlarstoffel? I think. Follow me. <laughs> yeah, YouTube. YouTube. Good for your good for your show. Yeah. <laughs> Not there, and then okay. on the right side. Thank you. Oh, he fell over. On the right hand side. Ah, here we are. That's what we're looking for. Not a great selection, but what we needed. Let's have a look. 180. <coughs> it says Jung, which is a really good make. Um, that's the right hand one and if you look there we've got a left handed one it says 180 L so do left and right handed there I don't know how much these are I'm going to get one because I've got one anyway but it's a little bit handmade and a little bit some better than others see that feels better in my hand than that one mm. oh damn it Slight difference. I don't think they're young hikers, though. To be honest, how do I get that in there like that? Oh, I don't know what I'm doing here, do I? Look at all that. Right, fox spikers. I ain't got many of them either. Uh, and the daughter. Not an awful lot in here, very quite honest. But got what I wanted. Um, Yeah, what else have we got here? Ah, oh, brick grabs. Ah. Oh. Brick cutter. Bricks in there. Put that on there. Net it with an amber. They are quite good. Too heavy to bring home though, isn't it? I'm up and in the bag. See what one, didn't you? Yeah. I don't know if I'm ever going to use it, to be quite honest. They are good, but. It's not something I'm, I might use. Uh, we've got some brick clamps here. Uh, obviously, oh, I don't know. How big do they go? I've got brick clamps, that's the trouble. We've got it all, but... Dutch brick clamps, handmade in Holland. No, I'm going to resist. Just, I've got it all, to be honest. <coughs> Just to show you. There like that. Uh, what else we got? 
Don't need that, don't need that. Oh. A quick look around see what they've got here, but as I say, here's a general hardware store, you've got everything you want, but just a bit of everything. Long handled shovels. Uh. And some tubs, there's the tubs. Deep issue. And here's the tubs I use. Seen Dutch boys using them. Right, let's go and pay for this. I got here anyway. <coughs> yeah, electrical stuff. No, I think there are there. Really? Right. <laughs> what? What? A what? A 90 degree level. <laughs> Number one. We're just waiting to meet someone here it's night look the christmas decks are up in amsterdam we're part of it um we're going to oh, probably chinese restaurant i think but this is this is like the harry ramsons of holland but there's no fish um many kempis like we number one holland fries they're <laughs> queuing up the chips look just, just chips, <laughs> chips. <laughs> listen you make money out of it make money out of it um, I've struggled with, I ain't really spent a lot of time in Holland for a while, with just <laughs> snacks, you know, used to get Frickendale specials and all the little snacks. I looked, we went to a... What one, about sausage and batter, mate? Sausage and batter, mate, yeah. We went on the damn square and there's a stall there, I said Frickendale special and the old boy looked at me, we don't sell them anymore. You know, there you go. All right. <laughs> right, it's early, minus four. I don't know, it's about nine o'clock here in uh, Amsterdam. <sighs> we're going fishing tomorrow again. Oh, don't. Ain't happening, is it? Too cold. I said to me, we have to come back in April or something to it then. Right, let's go back to um, Divalg. Uh, I, I, I hope you appreciate um, what I showed you there. I think it's fantastic that stuff, what was um, done in, you know, in the 1600s. It really is. But um, what happened after that is interesting because that, that was um, the Great Fire of London was 1666. This, this type of work was done well before that. Um, but when London burnt down, it had to be rebuilt, didn't it? And I don't know, but they, they'd done an act of parliament which sort of gives it away. Uh, they said that all tradesmen from um, abroad and the shires, obviously, you know, all the, all the counties around it, were allowed to work in London, because prior to that, they weren't. The only people who lived in London were allowed to work there, which I don't think is such a bad thing nowadays, but there you go. Um, so there's little evidence to show that um, Dutch Britain had actually came to London to help rebuild uh, London, but I'm pretty sure they did. Where would they get this... Um, you know, this fine art of uh, Gage Brickwork, where did he get to London? It, it, it must have been introduced, isn't it? And uh, Edward Helder, um, he was quite a famous bricklayer, or very famous really, he worked for Sir Christopher Wren, um, done a lot of Gage work for him. Edward Helder was Dutch. So, they, yeah, they, they they did, didn't they? Um, but the thing is, they probably angli anglicised their names. It's like every immigrant who comes to the UK, you know, uh, when Jewish people came here, every nationality, they didn't all, but you know they changed their names to uh, a more English name just just to fit in. Uh, so yeah, I reckon I reckon that's what happened anyway. Um, yeah, uh, so so that's that. 
Um, I don't know. We go. I don't know. We go fishing tomorrow. Fuck knows what's going on. It's too cold here. It really is. Same as the UK, but um, the boat's nice and warm. <laughs> right. I'll speak to you all tomorrow. Here we go. It's minus five. First cast, and I've had a zander. I haven't got no unhook in that. That's a problem, but. He actually has unhooked himself. Mick, do you want to grab this camera? Please. Hey? Just grab this camera. Just while well, I get this sorted out. <clears throat> Jesus. Get the hook out of there. Which I can't. There you go, like Xander. I'm not going to put my hand too near his mouth, but see their teeth in there? Also known as a pipe perch. Now, a lot of these um, videos I've seen in Amsterdam, when you're fishing up high, I've got this extra lot landing there, they just chuck them back in. That ain't the way to do it. First one today. Yeah. That's my bluff, not his. Oh, I just lost all my Xander lures on the bites. So I put perch lure on. I've got a nice little perch in this net somewhere. Thank you, Earl. Hey, nice size. Old sergeant. Put him back. Luck of the Irish passport holder. Yeah. <coughs> See, one of each. <laughs> Got it. Right, we're going to the fishing tackle shop. Uh, we caught more bikes and fish and lost a lot of lures. So we're going to uh, fish the tackle shop, replenish the lures. And we're on a free boat. We'll come from there. There's someone else in the rock there. And then we're going to here. See you there. My right dogs are this. Oh, it took us about 45 minutes to walk to this poxy fishing tail shop. Mind you, we've got what we wanted, but uh, I ain't walking back. We've got a bus coming in. Uh, there's another 3, 5, 4 in 12 minutes. Just hope we can pay on the bus. I ain't got a clue how it works here. Yes, we are in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Oh, right, it's early evening. Um, we're walking into town now. Um, there's our boat over there somewhere. Uh, Ten minute walk, there's a red light area. Oh, there's people fishing here. Uh, yeah, we're all ready to go again tomorrow. I mean, look at this, this is frost. That's right, it's about minus six at the moment, though, I reckon. Uh, Have you got a look? <coughs> Fish? No? What? Oh, oh, no, no. <laughs> we are here for 10 minutes. Okay, yeah. We had, I had two this morning. Let's see, Lewis is here. See, people do fish. It's not just only the mad English. Thank <laughs> you.
Okay, success. Success. Uh. Right. Um, yeah, it's fucking freezing. That's the best time that sort of fish now, really, but I can't be asked. Right. In the dark, for the Xander, this is the time they feed. So, they've obviously fished here before, haven't they? <laughs> locals. Do what locals do. Um, but there's, oh, there's, there's so much uh, water here to fish off. Right, I'm going to walk into town, I'll catch you there. There's one type of Dutch gable and another one. I can't remember the difference in the names now. That one there. Uh, one's called something, one's called the other. I ain't bothered showing you too much of the architecture of uh, Amsterdam because speak what I would imagine most of you have been here anyway and seen it. So um, it's probably space and it must be going, go here. Yeah. Especially the puffers, aren't you? Uh, yeah, there's a bit round here I want to show you if I can remember where it is. Oh, and then we've got to find a bar. I don't have no more of this. Right. Another typically Dutch construction. I ain't got a clue what it is. Um, but this one's right by the canal. It, it looks like where we were, devolved, doesn't it? But, uh, or it's another one of the gates of Amsterdam? I don't know. Is there anything you're going to tell me anything about it? No, but there you go. Right. Lost Mick already. Oh, there he is. Right. Coming up the red light district now, I think. Right. Well, we come past this pub yesterday. There was a sign out here. Um, that it's built in 1340 something. I'm not sure, but I just want to show you this. These tiny little bricks here. Can you see them? And that pointing, what's on it, is called a knipfug or snaifug. Um, it's just a, it's a strap joint really or a ribbon joint. The hell of a lot of the old, I don't do the new stuff no more, but the old, the old builders have done like it. Um, that's in cross bond or what's known as Dutch bond as well, English cross bond or Dutch bond. Uh, as the headers are half onto each other in alternate cultures, but I'd be surprised if it is at all, but there's one way of finding out. I'll go and have a drink and ask. Here, yeah, right, we're in the pub. Here, each. That's what it's built. Um, yeah. you can see that. 16. 18. Not bad, though, eh? Nice old boozer, isn't it? Covers a nice bloke. Yeah. We'll have a couple in here and mosey on. Thank you. Oh, Chinatown. Um, it ain't really low, is it? Well, it is. Um, part of it. There's just so many restaurants here. I mean, a steakhouse, noodle bar, tapas bar. Tapas bar, Spanish. Yeah, but I've never been to uh, anywhere. But there's just so many food outlets. They're, uh, they're everywhere. Sweet shop. <coughs> Yeah, we're going to have a little walk up the red light area. I haven't even looked at it since we've been here. Beer up there. Yeah. yeah, it's a bit quiet at the moment. It's only about six, I think, in the evening. Well, there's still people about, but... Uh, yeah, well, I think we're going to have a bit of steak tonight ourselves, actually. Chinese bed was uh, all right last night. It was good. But I'll tell you what, it ain't cheap here. They say London's expensive. This is more expensive. Uh, Right, catch you in a minute. Right, we're in the red light area. Um, keep the cameras straight. Well, I can't... Because it's early yet and they're all shut. There ain't no girls in here at the moment. Um, but you don't film the girls because it's just not the protocol. So, um, we don't do that. They've all got a job to do, haven't they? I suppose. Uh, yeah, there's a bit of that pointing up. <laughs> Only me could do this, put a pointing thing up there. <laughs> right. How oh, do you want to go, mate? 
They'll walk down here, eh? Uh, I don't know what... Yeah, this way, isn't it? Yeah. As you can see, very busy. Um, a lot of tourists. Obviously, there's a lot of sets goes on, so that's what makes the money. But um, obviously, a lot of people just look as like we are. <laughs> too cold, mate. Yeah, too cold to get an hard on, he said. <laughs> yeah. Um, I saw a video of some lads coming down here, this canal in a boat um, fishing. Uh, they did alright, had a few perch and Xander. Live show there. And he ain't on till 12 o'clock. Yeah, I'm on later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need a few more beers. Fucking <laughs> okay, no. Yeah, but, but yeah, it is busy. Right. Well, we're going to have a little mosey up here and uh, find a bar, I suppose. <laughs> What we normally do. We're probably, we ain't going to be out late at night, are we? Oh, no, I just went to a nice steak. A bit of steak, yeah. A bottle of red wine. A bottle of red wine. Yeah, Early it. nights, it's, 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 uh, it's minus seven at the moment. And we're going fishing in the morning and, uh, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> That's what we're here for, isn't it? <coughs> yeah, sexy Lou there. Beep show. Oh dear, hey. the debauchery of it all, eh? <laughs> and this new mayor, of um, Amsterdam wants to move all this. I think it's been put on hold a little bit, but she wants to move all this out of town. She reckons it's no good for the, the city. Well, that's debatable, isn't it? I don't know. Brings a lot of uh, people here, doesn't it? Amsterdam, that and Puff, isn't it? Cannabis, coffee shops, but <laughs> would the people still come here if they took them away? I don't know. There's stuff with here now. No, it isn't. There ain't nothing here, is there, really? <coughs> um, yeah, it's lost a lot of its uh, originality, but yeah. All right, see you in a while. I don't know if you can hear me above the music, but uh, I mean, I love Amsterdam. All these bars, this little bar here. Great music on. But it's so fucking expensive. I mean, I'm looking at the price list up there, and a bottle of Corona, six euros fifty, yeah, six quid for a bottle of Corona. Um, I don't know what I pay for this pint here, I can't remember now. Um, I was following one of, them, one of the Facebook groups and there was a Dutch Brit there on there. I think he was probably going to start and someone asked him how much they earn. And uh, he said about 700 euros a week. It ain't a lot of money, is it? Um, when you're paying prices like this. I don't know. Anyone watch my channel, Live in Holland? Can you like me on this? I know. Um, well, I never used to, they used to buy many houses, not the houses were renting and that, they never had great big overheads, but they might have changed, I don't know. But I'd be interested to know, because I always struggle to live here on 700 euros a week, um, paying bills out and, and drinking, <laughs> going out of a meal, it's just expensive, but yeah, let me know. Well, I just, we're just on the edge of the red light area, it's come out of that poser, but it's how I see it. I don't know if you can see it because it's dark, but it's Anno uh, 1660. Um, that's 1775 next to it. So, you know, this whole area was built, I, as I, I know I keep harping on about it, 1660, and London burnt down in 1666, didn't it? So, uh, yeah, I mean, this was some city, wasn't it, in the day? And that was obviously touched with great, big, great merchants, weren't they? Uh, as we were as well, but yeah, they was ahead of us there, weren't they? Right, we're going to get some, uh, I don't know, might have ribs, might have steak, I don't know. That's probably it for tonight, and uh, Mick nearly got run over. And uh, I'll see you in the morning. I bet I never had that camera around the right way. <laughs> That's what you call a nest of bikes. It's outside of um, Amsterdam Central train station. That is all bikes right way up there. It's about a million pounds worth of scrap, I think. <coughs> right, we get on the ferry going over there again, try a bit of fishing. That's the three ferries, what we was on yesterday, but take you over to. Uh, what's it? Is that Amstel Vane there? Yeah, yeah Amstel Vane, I think. Uh, on the sunny, there's two running still. This one's coming in. Uh, yeah, we're going to go over there a little bit where we were yesterday. Um, fishing looked all right. We'll just work our way back into town today. No walk, walk, you know, ever. No, no fucking walk. My hips are killing me. Yeah. I'm having a bit of a half-frighter's day today. Well, I've had it for a couple of days, really, but 
might be the cold weather, I don't know. Not a pain. Free ferry, this is in England without a pay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the Sunday, isn't it? Think that that was me over here. I'm going to take a walk out here. Uh, and there we go, here, yeah, more bikes. But we're going to have a fish up here. We're going to walk out to the chip shop there. I want to see if they've got any freaking Dale Specials. So let's have a look. It is so cold over here that the rod rings were freezing up while we were fishing. Uh, but we found Versafright and we've got the Frickendale Special. The elusive Frickendale Special. It used to be stalls everywhere through Amsterdam, so they need nothing special, it's just a sausage. But, uh, so I lost its identity, isn't it? I suppose tourists come here, they don't know what it is, so they don't order it. Just, well, not dogs, don't they? But you know, let's see what we get. Oh, I've got it wrong. <laughs> and there you go. Pretty little special. It's just a sausage, really. Um, we can make ketchup and mayonnaise and some uh, onions. Oh, I love them. Well, we sacked the fishing. <laughs> <coughs> so cold. Um, and we lost all the lures we bought yesterday um, on drowned bikes in the canals. Uh, that is something that happens though. Um, they do clean the canals out every now and again, but often enough, um, some of the bikes end up in there. So yeah, that's it. But we are coming back. We're coming back in March when it's warmed up and we know a bit more about the fishing now and that. Um, and a lovely bar now. A couple of beers. They've got glue wine outside. Um, we're gonna have some of that in a minute. And there's the menu there, we're gonna have some soups, hot soups. So, might catch you later. All right, we managed to find a sports bar to watch the uh, cup final. Um, half time, two nil. And uh, <laughs> I told him <laughs> come the land all fast time to him. Um, yeah, it's called the London Bar, I believe it or not. It's all right there, it's they sell Irish beer, but you don't get in there. Yeah, London Bar, and you get Irish beer. What's that? Anyone got that? Oh. Guinness IPA. I've never heard of it. Hey, no, it no, got rid of it, didn't it? No one drank it. Murphy's, you can yeah. get it. I've, I've seen it. Anyway, yeah, yeah, we're here. Yeah, it is, yeah. No, that ain't. This is the bitter. Kill cool. Kenny Red's a bitter. Yeah, Irish Red, that's bitter. Oh, yeah, you're right, yeah, yeah. So I'm having a beer argument with Mick. Um, yeah, we're going to watch this and. Uh, Gonna be about it really. Um, it's still freezing out there. It's supposed to rain. Um, I can't see it raining. It's cold. It's snow. Uh, yeah, that's probably gonna be about it. Um, I'll probably and it's like spectacularly happens. Um, I'll catch you up at the airport tomorrow morning. All right, see you later. Hello. We made it to the airport. Got a beer. Um, we flew with EasyJet. If you come to Ski Bowl, if you fly in Amsterdam. Um, I advise you get the uh, S1, which is the, the speedy uh, priority thing. It will save you a lot of AS. It's a nightmare of <coughs> an airport, this is. Um, just queued, queued, and queued. Right, uh, I just want to thank uh, Sunke uh, Devarg for um, letting us in and see the masterpieces. And uh, you've got a Futuristic laboratory there, what they run. I'll, I'll put um, a link up to their website. It's quite interesting <coughs> what they do. So you've got something futuristic in the uh, oldest building, um, which isn't the church, uh, in Amsterdam, which is ironic. But uh, yeah, yeah. thanks very much. Um, right, I'm just putting this video together. I don't know what it's going to be like, because it's going to be a bit up and down, I know. 
because it's been so cold here. Um, you know, just getting the camera up in the night now. Um, and it's now pissing down with rain. Uh, right, so we put it together, I put it out. Um, I'm going away Thursday. Um, I'm going to the sun. I'm going to Costa Rica in Central America for two weeks. Um, I probably won't be taking the camera. I want two weeks away from YouTube and Brick Lane and <coughs> the rest of it and have a proper rest in the sun. I'm looking forward to it. Um, so I wish you all, um, well, thanks for watching everyone, and wish you all a uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. I know it's um, might be a bit hard for some of you this year, but it's bad weather, Ed. You know, you lost a couple of weeks at work. It, you, know, you get these clowns on the, on the Facebook groups, get out, save your money and all that. And you know, well, it's not always possible with some people. You've got big families and big mortgages, and a couple of weeks off work, you know, it can cost you a lot of money. <coughs> but, um, you know, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world, and if it is the end of the world, there's fuck all you can do about it anyway. So. Um, it all comes good in the end, so Merry Christmas to everyone and Happy New Year, and uh, I'll see you all next year. Hello, we made it to the airport. We got a beer. Um, we flew with EasyJet. If you come to Ski Bowl, if you fly to Amsterdam, um, I advise you get the uh, S1, which is the, the speedy the priority thing. It will save you a lot of agony. It's a nightmare <coughs> in the airport, this is. Um, just queued, queued, and queued. Right, uh, I just want to thank uh, Sunke uh, de Varg for um, letting us in and see the masterpieces. And uh, you've got a futuristic laboratory there, what they run. I'll, I'll put um, a link up to their website, it's quite interesting <coughs> what they do. So you've got something futuristic in the uh, oldest building, um, which isn't the church, uh, in Amsterdam, which is ironic. But uh, yeah, yeah, thanks very much. Um, right. I'm just putting this video together. I don't know what it's going to be like because it's going to be a bit up and down, I know. Because it's been so cold here. Um, you know, just getting the camera up in the night now. Um, and it's now pissing down with rain. Uh, right, so we put it together. I put it out. Um, I'm going away Thursday. Um, I'm going to the sun. I'm going to Costa Rica in Central America for two weeks. Um, I probably won't be taking the camera. I want two weeks away from YouTube and Brick Lane and <coughs> the rest of it and have a proper rest in the sun. I'm looking forward to it. Um, so I want to wish you all, um, well, thanks for watching everyone, and wish you all a uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. I know it's um, might be a bit hard for some of you this year, but it's bad weather, Ed. You know, you lost a couple of weeks at work. It, you, know, you get these clowns on the uh, on the Facebook groups, get out, save your money and all that. And you know, well, it's not always possible with some people. You've got big families and big mortgages and a couple of weeks off work, you know, it can cost you a lot of money. <coughs> but, um, you know, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. And if it is the end of the world, there's fuck all you can do about it anyway. So um, it all comes good in the end. So Merry Christmas to everyone and Happy New Year. And uh, I'll see you all next year.